the residents of Orlando West. We are here because we know who Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu was to us. We don't want to be told by others who our Archbishop was. We are here to mourn someone who was a father, one who was a social activist, and one who was an embracer. He embraced people from every sector of life. Though he loved the unlovable and the unlovely. Therefore, as we meet here today, we remember him by lighting the candles, laying the wreaths. But I think Bishop Desmond Tutu is, he is bequeathing to all of us the baiting to continue where he left off. Therefore, after this service and other services that will follow, we will be failing him if we don't continue where he left off. Therefore, welcome to everyone who's here, especially member of various, members of various denominations who are here. Therefore, I recognize every denomination, clergy, bishop, and from uh, the Orlando Pirate Choir, uh, the politicians, Mother Swin, everyone who's here. Welcome, and I hope when we leave this place, we won't fail our beloved Archbishop Desmond Mpilo Boy Tutu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sabulela. And thank you, Ashtikino Paki. We will start the short part, which is a short uh, tribute, um, and, 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 and then we'll be followed by worship. But I want to start um, with the neighbors who live with Uotata, um, Umamu Pola Majola, and uh, I think she's accompanied by uh, another neighbor. Uh, between the two of you, please, I'm, I'm giving you five minutes for both of you. Um, my son is in a mama neighbor's game.
Wanga Unkulinkulu, Mazo Zonki Kat. Swang Oak Vuga Elang in Lanam Sanji. Says Ogazu Pelezella Likaw. As a pillar Nilo in Minyak. Mina Nkulisova would do. Mina Nkele Chakela. I was born and brought up in Epatella Street. When they came here, I was still young. Ubaba, Uma Ubaba, U Desmond Tutu, Uba Ubaba Gumpagatuala. Began a Ketibala Lomuntu. Ubaba no Mamlia, they were here because of God. It's not all of people about the fun. I need to have an about to my pet, and I'm touching up. Bogo Baba, go, ma'am. Ubaba Tutu, he used to come to my grand's house. And the Ekayatina were born from a poor family. And the Uma Mam no Coco, Baba Tuga Wooty. Ubaba Puma Lai Beverly Hills. This place is called Beverly Hills. Guti Tina Elokshin Lak Dallas on Gennes in Linzet. Mamma Tutu, she used to come a kaya as old umbro or no mamam. Oh, Babu Tutu, no mam Tutu Magu December time. They used to bring rosaries to Bonka Bokokobala. He used to look after the, 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 old, the, the elders. So Avantaba Fana Nabo, Gitigu Sung, Sikwele, Inyembez, Kotoa, Bati Umuntu Okoloyo, Ikola Lambel and Kosin. So O Sabenzile, he have run the race. Sifunani, who's born in Silinta, your pillar no gloom. Oh, Mamma, I am a BMU. Oh, Baba, no, Mam Tutu. They were always talking about Anglican Church. Which he was born and brought up in Anglican Church. Let me be short. Now I end up leaving my church. Now you join the Anglican because more you tell me. Now I'm going to send St. John's. Now Papa Tiswa, who father Mdau, is on seven. So, I'm going to go to the Asimkululeni si asgu tu gufa kukonu. Mtu ozalo mtu ozfaza ni nsugu zake zifishani. But si bonga. Ukuba kona kwa kebe. It is no bab. Because kule strata. We were lucky because we had abafundis abai tre. We were covered by abafundis. The corner house bogu babu tafan. Gu mfundis wala a methodist. The second house from Ekaya bogu babu matebula bogu mfundis wala se sabat. Se si pegu baba. But si abonga. Kuko gonke esi pile. Tina esi pile na injenga bo makelwa. Amen. of Jesus Christ. I only stand here to pass my a message. Uh, Desmond Tutu, I call them mommy and daddy. They were the people that welcomed me when I come to stay in Orlando West. I was born and brought up in Alexander Township, but this is my, par great, uh, my parents, uh, my grandparents' house. So when I came to inherit it, they were the people that welcomed and embraced me. They were such nice family, humble, motivators. I remember at one stage, every time there's a renovation here at the mission house, Mami used to call me and said, Paula, come. I'm going to demolish some of the things in the house. Pick something for my uh, Makoti, my, my younger uh, daughter. They used to call her Makoti because she, whenever they talking to Mam Tutu, she used to say, and that was the joke. But I really appreciate what Daddy did to us because the first celebration they had at um, Ubuntu Crawl, all the friends they had, internationally friends, when they came to celebrate with, with them, we were the first people to have a full house in the guest houses. They were motivating us to start the businesses. We even went to him when we started the businesses that, Tata, since you are one of the uh, two no uh, Nobel Prize winners in Orlando West, can we use your name as a marketing product for our businesses? He gladly gave us a photo that we printed on the T-shirts and then the business started booming. We're going to miss them. We're going to miss Tata very much. He was a daddy, he was a grandfather to our children. He was a motivator, he was everybody's father. What I like most about him, he always teach us to love each other unconditionally. Thank you.
exchange the friends. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bobo Mama, for sharing those words. And as we always know, that most of the time, the neighbors are the very important people to us. When anything happens to you, even before your family come, your neighbor is here. And we give thanks to God for, for the tributes by the neighbors. Then I want to move to the tributes by the church. Um, one will be from an ecumenical partner, and the second one will be from within. Um, the first one I want to call Vincent, Bishop Vincent Nobunga. Just two minutes, Bishop. I know priests are tempted to preach. Please don't preach. The sermon is coming later. This is not time to preach. Just share your contribution on behalf of the church and send word of condolences. Of condolences. The sermon is coming. And then after that, I will, I will ask the former dean of this diocese, uh, Reverend Peter Lingwe, who worked very closely with the Tutu family and with Archbishop Desmond Tutu, to share on behalf of all the clergy. Because Desmond Tutu was not a politician, but was a priest until, and a bishop until he died. So therefore, you'll represent all of us as clergy. So both of you will talk without any song. Immediately when they finish, please then bring a song. Please, two minutes each to share your, your condolences and your messages. Ntatu Nobunga from BMC Church. Thank you. Nyabonga. Mina lokuluma yo uvincenti unobonga bishop nobonga. Lokuluma yo ngi otenwe APMC Prayer and Mission Church, which is in Katlehu. So I'm here because of in the ubang George ubang later la na but you know isanga paga bishop tu tu ngoba shota ngoba fundis la bo mama ba beba la. Abo mama bang tonsi ile, abo mama bang nika umfuto. Bati baba ngoba upishop tutu, we amwana wita aga seko. So ndela uzo baba baba wetu. So mina ngrepresenta ipakela nevila gazi street. Na wanke umpagati wa se so wetu. Na wanke umpagati wa se South Africa. Sila tegelwe. Gakulu food, Sipsu, Gakulu food, Gotta Unkulukulu, Uyayazi, into Oyak, Gotta Unkulukulu, Uyayazi, into Ayentai, Msaume, Yiso Iskati, Salo Wutimaji, Unkulukulu food Bonatin, Ususayena, Nagiti, Goliba Tinga Shumai Lagit. Umfundisi, Bishop Wame, Reverend Minamabang Oteinoa, Bang Tangela Etami Vadakom. Moting a time if I come to Kuluma, I stop you. So my name is Ninja Alo, Askisi, Iskati, Tanki Nyawonga. Good afternoon to you all. May I observe all the protocols, acknowledge the Bishop of Johannesburg, Right Reverend Stephen Morel, the Executive Mayor, Mayor Palace, the Speaker, Ntate Vasco da Gama. Mine is a very short one to say we have lost a pastoral leader. The world over knows Archbishop Desmond Tutu as a profound intellectual giant. Indeed, he was that. But in addition to that, he taught us that the basis of faith and the basis of theology is actually love, compassion, and forgiveness. And he lived those ideals. Although he reminded us about that all the time. He also pushed us to improve ourselves academically, to go as far as we could. But when we reached those heights, he would come back to us and say, well, you know, that's not very important. <laughs> What's important is the love that you will display in your ministry the love of Christ with which 
you will serve the people of God. So I want to extend my condolences to Melia Tutu, Trevor, and all the children. I personally, as perhaps the most senior retired uh, priest in the Diocese of Johannesburg, I have known and worked with a man in various campaigns, even his campaigns at the South African Council of Churches and other ecumenical endeavors which he was known for. So I want to say those of us who have known him and worked with him know the pain of losing what we call a true soldier of Christ in the very, very deep sense of that. And so we want to salute our dear Archbishop and say, rest in peace. You have run the race, you have completed the course, and now the crown of glory is firmly within your grasp. May he rest in peace. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Bishop Vincent and uh, uh, Reverend Peter Lingue. I know Prismos, that's why I want you. always find a way to squeeze it in. <laughs> thank you very much, thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, allow me now to invite among us our first citizen in the seat of Johannesburg, our executive mayor, Dr. Mpopalatze, to, to address us on this very special day at the home of our, of our, of our, of our, of our beloved father. Um, Madam Mayor, I invite you to take the podium and address us.
Speaker of the Joburg Council, Councillor Vasco da Gama, Bishop Morel, the Dean of St. Mary's Cathedral, Father Kolani Dwati, men and women of God in this place, our elders, members of the media, special guests, I greet you at this prayer vigil in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was afraid when I arrived at the house and Father Kolani mentioned that we were going to start in the chapel where our departed Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu used to pray daily before starting his day. I was afraid because I realized that I was going to have to confront the altar that he raised in his labor of love for this nation and for this continent. I was afraid because of what that would mean for me as an upcoming leader in this city, in this nation, and for many others in my generation and beyond. We were truly blessed as Soweto. We were blessed as the city Johannesburg and we were blessed as a nation, South Africa, to have had a man of this caliber live and walk in our midst. But we were even doubly blessed, and I read this fun fact during the week, that this is the only street in the world where you have two Nobel Prize winners living on the same street. And they were both awarded an award for peace. And it can only mean that God was that serious about the peace of this land, that he had to raise not one, but two ministers of peace to live in our midst. I am afraid because they have both departed. And today as we pray, yes, I want to pray for those who mourn, for their comfort and for their healing. But I'm also filled with thanks for the honor that we had of having witnessed such greatness in our midst. For both of them were living epistles, letters that we could read, not just from books as our children and our grandchildren will have to do, but we got to watch them as they walked out this journey of a dream that they had for this nation, a dream of a peaceful South Africa, a dream of a united and a reconciled South Africa. It was Archbishop Tutu that coined the phrase Rainbow Nation, depicting who we are as a nation. South Africa is a rich melting pot of different races, culture, religious diversity, and other diversity. And it was their wish to see us embrace that as a gift, as a strength and not as a weakness. They sought to show us how to build bridges and not to burn them. And today I ask myself, will we continue building those bridges? And will we stop burning the bridges that they've built? I worry today when I see racial polarization, not only in this city, but in this nation. I worry when I see polarization across socioeconomic lines I worry if we are ready as a generation to start rebuilding the bridges that many of us have destroyed with our own hands. Yes, they have passed on. And it is my prayer that all of us who remain behind will be awake to this moment when mantles are falling down for the next generation to carry. And it is my prayer that we will have the boldness to confront our reality and pledge our lives as they have done. Archbishop Desmond Tutu lived a life of servanthood. He did not seek personal gain, and that is why he spoke so fearlessly against corruption that he saw on the rise in this nation like a cancer destroying everything that had labored so hard to build. 
not only spiritually, but also in the natural. Blood was shed for our liberation, for the freedoms that we enjoy today. We do not need to continue shedding blood. We have been given a strong foundation upon which to build. And all we need to do is be true to that calling to continue building these bridges and continue building on this foundation. I believe today that we are blessed to be standing here to have witnessed this life. We are blessed to be witnessing the exchange and to be on the receiving end of the mantles and the batons that are falling right now. And it is my prayer that we will stay true to our calling as we move forward to build South Africa. I stand here as the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, the economic hub of South Africa. It is also one of the most diverse cities in this nation, attracting many, not only from other provinces, but from across the world. It is indeed a melting pot, and it is here that we need to demonstrate what a rainbow nation can truly look like. I'm so grateful to our voters as we've just come out of elections that they've also given us a gift in that none of us came out with an outright majority as political parties. And as I look at it, I see that we are closer to the ideal of a rainbow nation, for now we stand as a multi-party government in Johannesburg where we've been forced to stretch outside of our comfort zones. We've been forced to speak to those we would have otherwise not spoken to and to seek consensus and to work together. And I believe that a foundation is being laid for what is coming in 2024 as we go into the provincial and national elections. And I can only pray that this is a result of the prayers that were prayed by the likes of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, that his dream of a rainbow nation will truly be realized even within our political ranks, and that we will see ourselves go beyond the boundaries of party political lines, the boundaries of race, and other forms of characteristics, but that we will hold hands because a house divided amongst itself will not stand. And I believe South Africa, as a gateway to the liberation of Africa, needs to be united for its own emancipation and that of Africa. As we pray, let us remember the lessons we've learned what we have read in this epistle as he was still alive. Let us not cease to read the lessons that he left us. Let us be faithful and let us deliver the rainbow nation that he envisaged for us. Thank you very much.
brothers and sisters, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for the message. Uh, we will continue. As Ashtikino Paki said, it is in our hands. We now come to a time where we will light the candles, um, where we, we will light the candles to signify that even in the midst of darkness, light conquers. To pray that may this light shine for the Tutu family at this time. In their hour of sorrow, may the light of Christ shine upon them. May the light of Christ shine upon this nation. May the light of Christ shine upon this city. So the bishop will light a candle specifically for the Tutu family. And the mayor will light a candle specifically for this city. And the speaker will also light a candle for the people of Soweto and, and Johannesburg. So as we do that, I'll ask all of us to actually stand. And if we may sing a nice solemn song as we actually do that sister ceremony. Biko, maybe if you can stand here by me. No. continue to shine among us and within us and this nation. Amen. Amen. At this time we will come through to the worship part. Um, this one we don't MC. It will be led by the bishop. So we will now have the first reading 
the psalm and the second reading. After the second reading, if we may have a chorus, a very hot one, after which Bishop Steve will address us and, and, and preach today. Uh, then after Bishop Steve preaches, the prayers will follow. I will then come after the prayer. So this session, there's no MC. It's a worship. It just flows by itself. I'll then come back to guide us where to after the prayers are done at a later. So let's sing one or two verses, and then we begin with the, with the readings. Uh, those who are appointed will come to the stage and to the readings. Thank you very much. The readings, um, Kapile, the readings, Abatreluk Funda is Fundo, and then Dukwaz Keuk Shumai, like a Dingamil and Diahal and Wok. Who are the readers? Okay, Sondelanke. Yeah, you're right. Uh, good morning and to Melang to everybody gathered here today as we gather to come and uh, bring light and love as Abe Fundisi have already mentioned. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 7 to 9. Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 7 to 9. Praise and prayer. I will tell of the kindnesses of the Lord the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, surely they are my people, sons who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed, and the angel of his presence saved them. 
In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Here ends our scripture reading. Yeah. We shall read the Psalms 34. Uh, we shall read from the Anglican Prayer Book, which is found on page 642. We shall read Psalm 34 from verse 1 to 8. I would bless the Lord continually. His praise shall always be in my mouth. Let my soul boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear it and rejoice. Oh, praise the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord's help, and he answered, and he freed me from all my fears. Look towards him, and be bright with joy. Your faces shall not be ashamed. Here is the wretch who cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him from all his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them in their need. Or oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy the man who hides in him. And we shall all say glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. That is now beginning. It is now and it will be. Amen. The second lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verse 2. If I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and to prophecy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish away behind me. Now we see 
but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now we see these three remains, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Hear the word of the Lord. And so we come out of that wreath-laying ceremony where neighbours of Archbishop Emeritus... Madam Mayor, Mepalazzi and uh, the Speaker, Ndate Dagama, Dean Kolani and your team, members of chapter who are here, Ndate Pitali Nkwe, our former Dean, if I don't say um, Mamchawe, it's my wife, I'll be in trouble by Zalwani. Mamchawe Nawe, Diagbona, Nawe Mamudin, and protect a Dinia Muguti Maifigan Lini, Inga Ginning again. My sisters and brothers, for those of us who are Christians, we have this library which we call the Bible and in this book which has been compiled by our foremothers and forefathers of the faith there are different books that are written here in order to address specific issues in the lives of the communities as was designed by God for the Muslims, they've got a uh, Quran, and I'm sure other religions as well, they've got a document which they refer to now and then as they move in their journey of life, whatever form of spirituality it takes. But for us who believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, this is the library we look into. And in times like this, we go back to it to encourage one another as we mourn for our beloved Archbishop. Now, in this book that was written to Paul, right into the Corinthians, the first book, chapter 13, there he talks about love. And right at the end, he says, there are three things that remain. You can have all these gifts, but three things remain. Faith, Hope and love. Friends, I believe that each and every human being, even also Otsi, they have things that motivate them when they sleep and when they wake up. I believe as we stand here, from the media, from wherever, 
we have those things that daily motivates us. And it's either these things, they motivate us to do good. Good for God, good for others, good for ourselves, and good for the creation. Or these things that motivate us can motivate us to do bad, bad for ourselves, bad for others, bad for our loved ones, bad for our neighbors, and also destroy the creation that God has created us. And I believe that as we stand here next to the home of Ndate Tutu and Melia, I believe that the Archbishop that you see in public addressing all sorts of issues, speaking truth to power, connecting with the neighbors. The Archbishop Tutu we see in public is the Archbishop Tutu who was moted, motivated by these three things that will last forever. He was motivated, and I believe that Peter, when you spoke about him, how he motivated us intellectually, theologically, speaking to some of the priests who were trained by him. They also talk about how he used to shake their thinking about, about, about God, about theology, and about society. Uh, in my reading and in my working with him, as with others like Ndate, Ndate Linkwe and, and Le Brother Doug, I believe that he was motivated by his faith in the Lord. He had faith in God. He had faith in the people. He had faith in himself. He had faith in others. He had faith in the capabilities of others. He believed that every human being has been uh, given faith by God and they are all divine. He believed that each and every person, unalibumudimu, the, the divinity, ubutikopagadkwake. You see, once you, once you start with your faith that looks at people that way, amen, you are going to do greater things for God. Okay, he had faith. Secondly, he had hope. Hope in God. Hope in the people of this country. He kept on saying in the uh, 70s and in the 80s, he kept on saying, I have hope that this country will change. That is why, that Peter, remember when, when, when SACC came up with the document, Yakaira's document, um, when they coined a phrase that we are prisoners of hope. He had also hope in this country that this country will change. He had hope that there will be freedom for all, for the oppressor and those who are victims of oppression. He hoped, the hope he had, it led him, as the mayor said, to coin that phrase, the rainbow nation. So he had faith, he had hope. But above all, Above all, when you talk about Bishop Tutu, in Dokala, that you think of, it's his love for people. He connects with people. I mean, the neighbors who were here, I could see that the third member here, she wanted to say something, you know. And now I'm fundis, I'm sure you wanted to say more. Thanks be to God that your air time here appeared. <laughs> And so Paul says that of all the three things, the thing that will remain in the end, it is love. You, it is love. Yes, this, you know, this, this Archbishop of us, he was amazing, you know. You know, when he was invited to a parish, Murtikatan, he will even go to the kitchen. To go and say thank you to all my mama peka. You know, sometimes, you know what we do when we go to a restaurant? 
We give tips to the waiter. The other day I decided, you know what? I'm going to the kitchen. I'm going to give a tip to the kitchen. Those guys who wash dishes, those guys who, who cook, we always smile to the waiter. Thank you. But Bishop Tutu would go, Kulabo Mamba Peka Pandle, at Boma Mandia Bulel. And he used to say, Mamcha, you remember, at yo, if you don't say thank you to this, this ones, next time, Bazak Vimbu Kutia. So he loved. And he laughed. He was laughing out of love. Not out of. It was a genuine love from within. He cried out of love for all of us, for this country, and for this world. If you read his book of prayers, oh my God, that's where you feel that this man spent time in this chapel. Hours and hours praying for us. Madam Mayor, you and I, and the speaker, and all of us were there. When we walked in there, I don't know. We, we felt something. We felt something. And we can't describe that something, says Edna. But we felt into the cause. We into the vacala. No man can get up. So he cried. He laughed. And he, you remember. I was talking to the chairman, well, Orlando Pirates. He was telling me, Uguti, when, when they were looking for us to host the World Cup, it was Bishop Tutu who took the, who took the leadership. And he said to them, let us pray. And there were those who don't know God. There were those who did not believe in God. They, there were those who, from other faiths, Marwati, let us pray. They ended up all praying. You know why? Because he had love. And you cannot be a great leader when you don't have love for your people. When you don't have love for people, because you don't love them. If you don't love the people that you lead, that social grant pension because our time and it. You know, when you don't love the people as a leader, let me tell you, you'll end up, you'll end up, because you're on exercise. Six o'clock in the morning. Oh! Ah, if there is one legacy that I want to continue to keep my body healthy. And you know what? Those of us who are priests here, you know. He loved to pray morning and evening prayer and Eucharist Yona. Aye. It was his daily thing. And as I come to the end of my message, he loved creation. He loved creation. He, he used to walk around and pick up papers. Ukuti Makube clean wherever he lived. And I think also it was his desire that Soweto must be clean. He kept the environment clean. Friends, let me say this. That do you know that his first will and desire was that when he dies, he should be buried from St. Mary's Cathedral. Not in Cape Town. That was not his original wish and desire. And the reason why he changed, you know why? He came when he said, we celebrated 40 years, the anniversary arc. 
and he walked around the cathedral precinct and he decided uh uh nandi phumela apha ndi phumela apha kumdaka khona what chick is and then said i want be buried from St. Mary's Cathedral. Not because I hate Johannesburg, not because I hate Gauteng, but because, unfortunately, the precinct around our cathedral is not a good one. We went to Mnano Dini to go and talk to him about it, and he, he said it. I'm changing my mind, not because I don't love the city of Johannesburg, but because Njekungo Lile Ta. Madam Mayor, I committed myself at the press conference yesterday that we as the church, we will support you in your endeavor to help clean the city center and let it become that which it was before so that we may become a world-class city in Africa. We will support you. We will support you. But Madam Mayor, also, I want to say to you, I want to encourage our Anglicans to pay for services. For services. I want to encourage them. Singa Tinjas Funa is service delivery. Go to Atina as Funukbata. So that Masu Luisa or Madam Mayor said, Madam Mayor, why is why are you not delivery? And that is why, as the leadership of the Anglican Diocese of Johannesburg, we are saying to our parishes, make sure that you pay your rates as a, di as a parish. So that Monday, my up, the Christians must pala. Then I know, they must criticize. Marnam dia patal. Unga ki maliet. Yok clinistrat. So may God bless you, Mazalwane. As we lay to rest, our father, our friend, our mentor, our everything, who had these three things that will remain faith, hope, and love. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we celebrate this day. We celebrate the life of Yaga Archbishop, Ntate Waruna, the leader, the teacher. He was everything. We celebrate Wupilobahaye with praise and thanksgiving for the hope of everlasting life, which is ours in Christ Jesus. 
keep us steadfast in this faith during the time of sorrow and bereavement. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thank God for your love reflected in Archbishop Desmond Mpilo Tutu's life and for the joys we have shared with him. Free us from all bitterness and regret. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you that our Lord Jesus Christ came to share our sufferings and enter into our sorrows. May all who mourn know his compassion and be filled with his peace. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Mudimo Ntatiwaruna, for those who tend the sick and dying, especially those who cared for Archbishop Desmond Mpilotutu. May your gentleness and love be always revealed through them. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for our unity in Christ, which even death cannot destroy. Increase our faith in the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What I think we'll do now, uh, we will move now to allow our leaders to lay the wreath on that side. But I'm thinking let's somehow finish all announcements so that when they are done there, we can be able to release them so that we don't have to regather. So let me take this opportunity first to thank each one of you for being here. I think we deserve each one of us a round of applause for ourselves. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of our bishop, on behalf of, 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 of our leaders in the city, thank you for the sacrifice of being here when the sun is so hot, but thank you, it, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you to the choir, the Mother's Union, each one of us who's here. But more so, thank you to our, to our leaders. Firstly, thank you to our bishop. Uh, thank you, bishop. Digvile, digvile. What one is Kub? Uh, thank you to Mam Chawe for making the, the time to be here. Well, thank you to, to the speaker, thank you to the mayor, and brothers and sisters. Oh, thank you to my wife as well. Uh, she's, she's looking at me. <laughs> but, but thank you to the clergy that are here as well today for, for actually making the, the time to, 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 to be here today. But also, brothers and sisters, I think we need to thank the city for the support and coming to the party to make sure that Archbishop Desmond Tutu is celebrated properly through, through all the, the events. Thank you very much to the office of the mayor and, and, and to the whole uh, leadership of the city. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. We, we have a book of condolences. Once we're done there, our leaders will firstly sign the book of condolences. Afterwards, if, you, if you'd like to do, you'll have that opportunity. If you miss the opportunity today, there will be a book of condolence book at Holy Cross um, in the Holy Cross Anglican Church. They would have a condolence book there uh, from, from today um, until, until 4, uh, th um, um, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday as well, uh, Friday until 1. Um, and, and as we know that on, um, on Friday, there will be also a service at Holy Cross 
at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, where the bishop will be leading as well uh, to continue to celebrate. But tomorrow, there is the memorial service at the cathedral. As you know, as the bishop said, he would, have, would love to be buried here. So what at least we were given is to at least give him a memorial service in his favorite cathedral. So tomorrow at 11 o'clock, there will be an official memorial service. Thank you to the seat once again tomorrow, together with the, with the, with the official memorial service of our diocese as we, as we partner together. Um, it starts at 11 o'clock. Those who wish to, to, to attend, parking is at Metro Center in, in Bramfontein. There will be a park and ride that is provided by the city to take people from Bramfontein to the church and then after the service back to the church again. And let me advise you, that will be an easy, peaceful process to park at Bramfontein and then go um, so, so that you, 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 you are not under stress. As we know, we'll have limited parking at the, at the cathedral. So we are asking those who are attending to be seated by, by, um, by, by half past 10 so that we can start uh, sharply at um, 11 o'clock. Um, yes, um, Lulu, 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 Lulu is here. Where is Lulu? Um, I, I know some people have already booked, uh, but you can speak to, to Lulu. But we have made provision anyway. Um, in, 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 terms of, in terms of numbers. We are not going to go 100%. We are only going 50% capacity with spacing. Um, of course, you can arrive at 11 and, and, and expect to be, to be attended to. So I, mean, I, would, I would advise you, Mother's Union, the earlier you arrive to sit comfortably and make sure you, you are fine. But of course, as the bishop said, there is a maximum capacity that we, we can take. So Lulu is there if you wish to, to talk to her. So what we'll do now, we will allow... Um, space to be made and 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 before we do that reverend Doug, maybe come and give us a blessing so that once we're done there we don't come back here and the protocol people will lead our leaders how to proceed and then once you're there you will be given the necessary leaves to put at this time once we do that if the choir could sing as well at the time reverend Doug, give us a blessing Gracious God, whose love is shared in life, whose blessings are experienced through others, we, your people, bless each other, and we bless you. And we bless you because one who was full of blessing came and was amongst us. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer be upon us and remain with us, and those we love and pray for, and those we do not love and pray for, and those who love and pray for us, and those who do not love and pray for us, this day and always. Amen. Choir, you can go, and the, the protocol will lead our leaders.